The American bison, better known as the buffalo, the vasters that once roamed the West were the foundation of the way of life for the Cheyenne, Lakota, and other Plains Indian tribes. And for Lakota artist Kevin Pouye, they still are. It's like my ancestors were the buffalo gave so that they could live. I really feel like that's what's happening today with, uh, with me and my family. Pouye transforms rugged buffalo horns into stunning works of art. Earrings, jewelry, belts, and ornately decorated horns and buffalo horn spoons. Atomic Lakota, and all the colors are inlaid stones and shells. Native people once used the buffalo horn for spoons and other items, and while Kevin is inspired by his Lakota heritage, like this piece featuring the great chief Sitting Bull, his envelope pushing work is anything but traditional. I'm not living in a teepee. I'm a contemporary 21st century Lakota man. And so I'm telling my own story. Kevin has quite a story. I was so lost. I was lost in the in alcohol and, and drug addictions. Uh, I came to the point where I just couldn't take it anymore and I had to quit or, or die, you know. And Freed from addiction, he was about 30 when friends introduced him to the art of carving. They were carving with elk antlers, but he said, I'm doing this. Eventually do something of your own. And so I tried a piece of buffalo horn. And his now clear mind began focusing on his native heritage. I knew I was Lakota, but I didn't know really what that meant. I didn't grow up with those ways. Kevin began participating in Lakota ceremonies and making jewelry, selling his work at powwows and other events, and discovered his creations were an instant hit. I'd won a second place ribbon and won $200. And at, at that time, $200 was what it took me to for a whole week of work in the factory. Pouye soon left his job at a factory and moved to his father's ranch on South Dakota's Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, where he helped with the cattle, set up a studio, and created art. And from going to these local shows, we would have curators who were really impressed with our work, and they would be judging these local shows. And we got invited to Phoenix. That show at Arizona's prestigious Herb Museum led to an invitation to the Santa Fe Indian Market, the top show for Native artists in North America, where in 2018 he won Best of Show, the top prize, for Weawana Kikshin, meaning Women Defenders of Others, a belt featuring images of eight influential Native women carved on pieces of buffalo horn. Artists, activists, grassroots women, and these are women all beloved by their communities who were doing it out of their hearts. That work was later purchased for display at the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian, one of a number of major museums that owns and displays Kevin's work. Our work has been shown in Paris, at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City, and, and we, we pinch ourselves to, to, that this is really happening. That's a long story short, but it hasn't been quite that simple. For one thing, buffalo horn is not the easiest material to find. It's always been difficult. Uh, there was a time probably in the around 2000, the late 90s, where I had almost gone out of business because I didn't have any more material. Kevin has since connected with buffalo ranchers to solve that problem, but he can still run into objections. I've had uh, someone actually uh, be mad because the buffalo has to die for me to use the horn cap. And I, she almost slapped me at this art show and she walked away. And I said, wait, wait, come back here. And she came back and she was so mad. And I talked about how this material, you know, is sacred to us and how I make these beautiful things. And it's not being thrown away and put in a landfill like a lot of people do with these materials. And she actually bought a pair of earrings after we talked and I educated her. Much of Kevin's work is simply beautiful, jewelry, bolo ties, decorative art, but he's not shy about using his platform as an artist to speak up about issues he cares about. I mean, life is short. I want to be one of those people that, that have something to say. Like this piece he did on his so-called mixed blood ancestry of French and Lakota. One little girl asked me, how does that make you feel? Illustrating how a person with roots in both worlds can sometimes feel like they belong to neither. To communicate an awareness with other people well, something I made was really fulfilling as an artist. Kevin says the Lakota were known as the people of the buffalo, who used every part of that animal. This 21st century Lakota man carries on that tradition in new ways. 
I almost died from that uh, lifestyle that I was living, and a lot of our people still are. And if I can inspire a young person from the reservation to be an artist, that's what I want to do, even if it's one or two people.